Hello everyone, welcome to Frank uh, Bench and uh, here we have a uh, working C64 so what's so special about uh, this 64? Uh, special is a uh, it has a prototype uh, that I just uh, completed uh, for 8701 uh, clock generator substitution. This is the original chip, most technology, and this is uh, one of uh, my best prototype, uh, which is one single chip, uh, modern chip that I adapted. Uh, so, <clears throat> before continuing uh, this um, uh, substitution uh, and uh, replacement of the MOS technology 8701, uh, let me explain some something behind uh, uh, this chip and uh, the Commodore 64 clock generation. What you see on the screen is uh, uh, the schematic of uh, the yearly Commodore 64 clock generation. It generates uh, two clock, the color clock and the dot clock. The color clock is uh, four times the color carrier, uh, which is uh, uh, 17 and uh, and 7 megahertz on uh, on PAL systems and this is a um, standard uh, uh, PLL circuit uh, with uh, crystal accelerator, divi dividers, uh, charge pump, filters uh, and so on and it requires uh, the P0, the uh, main CPU clock, which is uh, obtained from the VIC chip as a, a phase comparator signal. So this is um, uh, the first uh, Commodore schematic uh, um, for generating the two uh, clocks uh, needed by uh, the Commodore 64. Later machines to uh, save board space, but uh, uh, most of all the save money. Um, most technology uh, Commodore developed a single chip with uh, crystal oscillator, and that generates um, uh, the two the dot clock and the color clock needed by uh, the big chip to to run uh, every other clock in, inside the Commodore 64. This chip obviously is not longer produced, so when it breaks, uh, you have to find a, a vintage replacement. Um, but its uh, the, the, its function is uh, really simple. So it my idea was uh, replace uh, uh, make came up with a replacement. Uh, that can be plugged into the 8701 uh, socket and function exactly uh, as the original chip. Uh, so I started developing uh, uh, completely new chips, uh, modern chips that uh, can do clock generation and uh, of course they have to be programmed in some way to uh, generate the exact uh, frequency that is needed on the Commodore 64. And one of the I, I uh, evaluated uh, quite a few different chips. One of the most uh, uh, good candidates was this uh, Texas Instrument chip which is really small and uh, modern and can generate uh, anything it can be programmed with uh, I squared uh, C bus uh, but the problem with this one is 
but it needs uh, two different power supplies and none of mm, of this power supply is 5 volts uh, it needs 3.3 uh, volts for uh, the output interface and 1.8 volts for the the internal uh, logic so I started uh, uh, working with this one but it would require uh, to add uh, voltage regulators uh, on uh, on a replacement board and then one day I was reading uh, LFT which is a nice hacker and coder very very skillet I was reading LFT blog where he was uh, talking about uh, the VSP uh, uh, technique, uh, programming technique for the, the VIC chip and he was uh, talking about uh, memory corruption that can uh, be originated uh, by uh, some conditions on uh, uh, during uh, the the function the, the refresh cycles generated by the VIC chip and it was men just mentioning that uh, the the two clocks can be uh, can start uh, in any phase uh, between them uh, during the power uh, the power up of the Commodore 64 so that rang me a bell because I remember that I discarded a possible uh, uh, replacement which seemed perfect to me it was 5 volts complaint and it had um, a crystal oscillator built in so I'm using uh, the original crystal with this chip there's no need for, for another crystal on, uh, on the replacement and it could be programmed by just uh, grounding uh, some pins so no need to use a computer interface to program the chip and but i discarded this uh, replacement because it didn't guarantee any relation starting relationship between the two clocks and i thought that was bad for uh, for the c64 then when i read the the lft blog i changed my mind and it was right it seems to work fine so what i will do next is of course design uh, a real uh, pcb replacement port and in the meantime run uh, programs and demos on the modified c64 to understand if uh, this replacement uh, makes the system as stable and as good as uh, the original uh, clock generators uh, clock generator chip so let's see what happens next
So the demo run uh, till the end, as you can see, it was obviously not with the right uh, seed uh, chip, but I'm testing this board for the moment when I have the chance to make a PCB for this replacement. I will try the same demo on a newer C64 with the replacement chip. But anyway, I didn't detect any problem uh, during uh, all the demo. So this replacement uh, uh, is working enough well for the moment. Here it is the replacement uh, PCB that I designed and put in the socket uh, of uh, 8701 and for comparison is uh, the original 8701 so the, the replacement is uh, almost the same dimension of the original chip uh, it was a little bit tricky to make uh, such a small uh, uh, PCB for my skills anyway and this time uh, this is on uh, C64C and I just uh, try to calibrate the correct uh, frequency with the variable capacitor, the yellow one uh, because the original 8701 has a different uh, loading uh, to the, the crystal uh, with respect uh, to the replacement um, but the frequency came uh, enough uh, close to what it's supposed to be now it's time to run uh, some demos and uh, games to test the replacement but anyway I expect it to work like the prototype uh, so there shouldn't be any surprises I'm playing uh, as much as I can uh, with the C64C with the replacement 8701 and it seems okay so the replacement uh, works um, I had to change the the C socket uh, inside the 64C to make uh, the replacement make a, a reliable contact but uh, it seems uh, everything not, everything else is okay. Okay, this is uh, the last test uh, recorded on the video. I guess the replacement uh, is enough tested, but I will leave a uh, couple of prototypes on my more used the C64. So it will be tested uh, every time I'm going to use or play with a Commodore 64. From now on, thanks for watching. Bye bye.